Yeah, so I'm a Jeep guy at heart, but you have to admit, those Rams are pretty nice trucks. What can I say? So briefly, let's talk about what this truck is. Now this is a 2020 Ram 1500. It's a big horn trim, crew cab, not the quad cab, and it's got the five foot seven inch box. It's four wheel drive. As you can see, it has the North Edition package, which to be completely honest, I didn't really know exactly what that was when I saw this on the lot, but apparently it's a special edition package that kind of mixes the off-road hardware with the sport appearance. So you get like the body color bumpers and grill and door handles, all that cool stuff. But you also get the locking rear differentials, skid plates, heavy duty shocks, one inch factory lift, and so on and so forth. It also has some cool winter equipment on the inside like really nice floor mats, heated steering wheel, heated seats. So for $1,500, the North Edition package was a really good deal actually. It also has the level two equipment package so it's got all the really nice goodies on the inside, like the 8.4 inch Uconnect and all of that good stuff. The interior on these trucks is, in my opinion, some of the nicest interior you're going to find on any pickup truck. I think these are just beautiful. Now, of course, you can get the optional, what I call TV screen, the big, huge vertical TV screen. But not only is it expensive, but I kind of worry about that long term. That has to be something that uh, eventually will be problematic. And the back row on this thing is huge compared to the Gladiator. My son could probably lay out and take a nap back here like it's some kind of a bunk bed or something. I mean, there's just a ton of space. If I hop in the truck, and again, I'm about 6'3", you can see how much knee room I have. And that's what the seat, the, the seat in front of me is kind of uh, reclined a little bit. And I've still got several inches of knee room here. Lots of headroom. I mean, this thing is just like a car inside. It's so quiet. It's almost too quiet because you need to rely on your senses to be a safe driver. Well, when you're in this truck, you can't hear anything hardly. It really cancels out almost everything that's going on outside the truck. So if you like a quiet cab, the Ram is the one for you. Now some other interesting specs on this particular truck. The payload capacity is 1,645 pounds. So just a little bit more than the Gladiator. Towing capacity on this truck in particular is 10,000 pounds. And I just took it across the cat scale a little bit earlier this evening. Uh, it's in bone stock condition right now. I haven't done a single thing to it and it went 5,400 pounds on the cat scale which is just a couple hundred pounds more than a gladiator rubicon would be for example so despite the fact that this is a really big truck they did a really really good job of shaving weight out of it and so the weight uh, kind of you know helps your fuel economy as well which is kind of interesting i was surprised that this thing was so lightweight but Here's the part that's really, um, in my opinion, kind of the most significant thing about this truck. And that is that it's an eco diesel. Could you hear that startup? Probably not. The camera probably didn't even pick it up. The backup camera screens are so nice on these Uconnect systems. So I've got 417 miles on this truck so far. It's been a mix of city and highway, and it's showing me 24.7 miles per gallon. The dealership did top off a def fluid tank for me, and it's uh, the, the needle's starting to come down, but looks like there's still plenty of def. And uh, I'm gonna probably, you can see there, I'm not quite to a quarter tank. I'm gonna probably try to keep this truck filled up once I get down to a quarter tank. Uh, to try and help protect that expensive fuel system. But so far, this truck has exceeded the uh, window sticker rating. Uh, it's rated 24 combined city and highway, and I'm showing almost 25. So, you know, and it's not even broken in yet. Plus, we're still on winterized fuel. So, you know, my guess is this is going to be really, really good. You know, once we get to the warmer weather, the engine's broken in a little bit more. You know, I might get 25, 26 on my weekly commute. Not bad at all. It did, uh, in fact, take me a little while to get used to that knob. Once you get used to it, it's kind of cool, but 
you know, it does take a little uh, brain training to get used to that because uh, the first time, like what after we got it, first time we took it to somewhere, you know, like a restaurant to eat and I was backing in, I accidentally turned the knob the wrong way. I was in drive when I thought I was in park, let my foot off the pedal, careless mistake on my part, truck kind of started rolling forward a little bit. So I quickly learned that you have to pay attention until you get used to this. But like I said, I'm, it only took a couple of days and I'm used to it now and it's, uh, it's kind of nice actually. And you don't have to worry about, you know, the mechanics inside the steering column like we used to in the old days. You'd have to go in there and change out the tumbler or, you know, some of the parts inside there and it would be kind of a pain. Well, if this ever did fail, you just simply pop it out, plug a new one in, you're ready to go. So I guess there's a benefit there also. But I have to say, everything isn't perfect with this truck. So here's the negative that I've found already, and that is the programming, particularly the engine calibration. Now, I've driven a lot of turbocharged vehicles, everything from Mini Coopers with the little turbo engines to a F-150 with a 3.5 EcoBoost, full-size diesel trucks, Cummins and Duramax. I even had some of those Jeep Liberties. Remember those back in 05, 06? when they had the little VM turbo diesels in those. So I've driven a lot of turbocharged vehicles, gas and diesel. This 2020 Ram with the third gen Eco Diesel, it has the worst turbo lag I have ever experienced. I mean, it's horrendous. Um, and it's gotta just be in the programming because the engine itself is pretty awesome. You know, and the, the transmission is great. So it's gotta be in the calibration they put in this thing, but the turbo lag is horrible. There are times, like if you're putting along in fourth or fifth gear, and then you need to put some throttle input into it and move on out of the way. No exaggeration, guys. There are times when I'll dip into the throttle and there'll be a three or four second delay between me hitting the throttle and the engine doing something. So, I mean, that's just unacceptable. The turbo lag is horrible on this thing. And uh, it just, and the way they've got it dialed in, it just it also, even when it's not laggy, it just feels underpowered until you get to like half throttle. So it's almost like they've got this thing programmed uh, to try and squeeze every bit of fuel economy they can out of it. Um, you know, it feels like there's a lot of torque management incorporated in the tune. That's what it feels like to me. Now I can't confirm that, but just from the seat of the pants feel and my prior experience, you know, I would say they've got a lot of torque management built into this engine tune. So that's the one negative that I have found is the programming is terrible. So if you're an enthusiast like me, a truck or a Jeep guy, and you buy this engine, you're probably going to want an aftermarket tune. Um, now, in the past, I've used Green Diesel Engineering, and uh, I think those guys, uh, GDE, they're up in uh, Michigan, I want to say. But anyhow, they do top-notch tunes. They're really good guys, uh, know what they're doing. They take a lot of time to calibrate everything properly, test it properly. When you get a tune from them, you know it's gonna be good stuff. And I talked to them yesterday. They said these third-gen Eco Diesels, you know, they're probably about 18 months out because as, as you know, the EPA has really dropped the hammer here lately on tuners. And so they're gonna take the time and make sure their tune is uh, compliant you know, with all the uh, standards that have to be met. So it's going to take another maybe 18 months. So we're looking at maybe 2021 calendar year. Um, but I'd say it's worth waiting, you know, to get a good tune for this thing. I think a good aftermarket tune would really, really change this truck and wake it up from the dead because that's what this thing needs. Um, the driveline, like I said, I'm pretty happy with the driveline so far. It's got a lot of, you can tell it's got a lot of torque, a lot of power. It's smooth. It's quiet. It's fuel efficient. It's everything you want it to be. It just needs better programming. So keep that in mind. If you go test drive one of these, you'll see what I'm talking about uh, with that turbo lag and the dead zone in the throttle response. But I guess so far. I mean, the mirrors, you remember how I complained about the Jeep Gladiator mirrors? These mirrors are so much better. I can actually adjust them to where I can see everything I need to see. They also have the power folding feature so if you get into a tight spot you can simply hit a button and both mirrors will fold into the door and of course you've got all kinds of uh, information on your screen which is also programmable so i mean i'm not going to keep hashing this out but the bottom line is this truck so far i'm really happy with it i think it's a, a great truck 
um, and the diesel engine is going to be great once it gets a nice tune. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. So there's what the new generation three eco diesel looks like with the engine cover taken off. Of course, the turbo is still buried way back there on the back of the engine. Between the engine and the firewall, you can't even see it. So if a guy ever had to do turbo work, you'd probably want to just uh, unbolt the cab and lift the cab up off the chassis. Um, that's kind of unfortunate, but the oil filters right down here, easy to get to, you know, everything else is uh, still pretty much, uh, you know, kind of like the Gen 2 in, in, as far as location of things. But uh, this engine does make a little bit of clatter, like you heard in the other video when you first started up on a cold morning. When you're taking off from a red light, you can hear the clatter. But once you get up to highway speed, you really can't hear anything at all. I mean, it's very well insulated. So the guys and the girls who like the quiet diesels, they, you know, they did a great job because this thing is super, super quiet. So in a previous video that I posted last year, I kind of went over all the costs associated with the eco diesel and the fact that you're not going to save any money with it. And that's still true. You know, now that I've got some firsthand experience with this thing, uh, I kind of know even more about what it's going to cost to maintain it. For example, I called my dealer today. They quoted me $250 for an oil change. They said the oil filter is listing for $92 and the oil is over $100 plus you got labor and taxes. I'd be pushing $250 just to get an oil change on this thing. I was afraid to ask them what a fuel filter swap would cost but I did find the fuel filter online for $38 and it looks like a pretty simple procedure. As far as I know, this truck only has one fuel filter. It's not like the Cummins that has two. So it should be pretty cheap and easy to do that part if you wanted to do it at home. Uh, but the other concern is, you know, a lot of people are worried about how expensive it is to repair these things. If the, you know, if the Bosch fuel system gets uh, imploded and wipes out your whole, you know, fuel lines and injectors and everything, I mean, you can spend eight or 10 grand trying to get this repaired. And, you know, if you've been doing your own service, they might try to give you a hard time. Uh, you know, there's a big debate about the legality of them giving you a hard time for doing your own service. But fact is you can do a Google search and find a lot of people who have had trouble getting their dealers to cover that under warranty. So let's say you want to protect yourself and decide to let the dealership do all your service. You're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars per year just to do basic maintenance on this thing. So, that is kind of an expense for sure. And then of course, obviously the engine itself is a $5,000 upfront option. So, you know, you'd have to put a lot of miles on it to ever get back your cost there. Uh, now fuel wise, like I just showed you, the fuel economy is great. Right now, diesel fuel is running about 40 cents a gallon more here in my area. But when I do the hand calculations, you know, a Hemi, which gets around 15 to 16 miles per gallon or this, which can get 24 or 25, you know, even at 40 cents more per gallon, you will save money on fuel. It's just all the other things that eat up that fuel savings. Uh, so as far as, you know, the financial aspect of it, no, you're never going to save money. You're never, ever going to save money in the grand scheme of things with this engine. But what I've learned is that there's more to it than just money. Some people like myself, really like that torque because this thing makes 480 pounds feet at uh, what 1600 rpm so once it gets up to eighth gear on the highway it stays there it'll stay in eighth gear until the cows come home whereas the hemi will downshift upshift downshift you know so it's a much more relaxed driving experience with the diesel uh, it's less wear and tear on your transmission and of course that's how it gets the great fuel economy because it's able to stay in a higher gear all the time so you know the torque and where the torque hits in the power band, the drivability, you know, those are the reasons that people love these things. So there's more to it than just the financial aspect, you know, so I can kind of understand that. A lot of people on the forums have said that these engines are kind of rated for a 150,000 mile lifespan. Uh, so it's not like the diesels that I grew up with, that you guys may have grown up with. It was common for those things to hit a half million miles, no big deal. These finicky modern diesels, you know, they might not stand the test of time like that. But, like I said, you know, the torque is awesome. The fuel economy is awesome. I'm sure it's going to tow a trailer really well, but I'm going to be testing that pretty soon, too. So, 
Just a quick overview here of this 2020 Eco Diesel, the Gen 3 engine. They supposedly fixed a lot of the issues with the previous generation. You know, it's got that dual EGR system on it and a lot of different things that they've changed to try and get rid of the problem areas. So time will tell. And of course, I'll keep you updated. But uh, if you've got any questions about this truck, let me know because I'm going to be putting it through its paces in the real world. We'll be hauling, towing, doing all the stuff that we used to do with the Gladiator. We're gonna do it with this one for a while and I expect it to do an even better job. So, hey, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Garfield's ready to go in. It's getting dark out here, but thanks for watching and uh, we'll be back later with some more.